On this edition of Awaken to Wonder, we're going to hear a piece from a sermon that Caleb was preaching up in North Carolina, Moravian Falls, at the Gathering Church. Hey everyone, welcome to Awaken the Wonder podcast with me, your host, Evangelist Caleb Wampler of Kingdom Encounters International. I've seen hundreds of thousands of people come to salvation in Jesus in countries hostile to the gospel, witnessed impossible miracles, and regularly experienced God's wonder. This show is an outflow of my life in ministry in the nations. Tune in weekly to hear miracle testimonies and encouraging stories from the fields of harvest from both me and my global ministry network. As we journey ahead, may you hunger for God as never before and awaken the wonder of your relationship with Jesus. Did you know I have a brand new book out called Hunger? It's a riveting collection of heavenly encounters and my friend, you cannot be the same after opening up and reading its pages. Hunger not only chronicles the encounters of men of God that have gone before and throughout history, but it is also a heavenly encounter itself. I myself list my heavenly encounters in there, and I know it will stir your faith. You're going to have an intensifying passion to seek and commune with the Lord, a growing burden for souls as you ignite that with the heart of Christ, a heightened awareness of the eternal that will inspire an impassioned pursuit of heavenly treasure. My friend, not only will your faith be stirred in God and strengthened, but your love for him will be deepened. You need to get this book today and you can get it on Amazon or on kingdomencounters.us or wherever books are sold. My friends, go on there today again and get your book, Hunger. I know it's gonna be a blessing to you. Forward written by evangelist Daniel Kalenda with endorsements from those such as Carlos Anacondia, Jeannie Mayo, Brian Guerin, Dr. Scott Hagen, and so many more. Again, go on Amazon today or to kingdomencounters.us and get a copy of Hunger today. It's good. And, and, and you're like, well, you haven't been through anything, Caleb. I don't know, blah, blah, blah. Right. We just went through something crazy just a few months ago. My wife is dealing with this crazy situation. I was, I was uh, in Nebraska, and there's a couple of the people from the church there that are here, and they can vouch for it. We announced we're going to go after a million souls in 2021. I'm, killing, I'm telling you not. We're going after one million souls next, this year. We have a crusade lined up in March. We're expecting 250,000 people in one night. It's already on the calendar. It's in the books. We're getting the permits done right now. This is like, it's happening in Jesus' name. We're going for the harvest. This is what we do. And I announced this at this church in Nebraska. Within 24 to 48 hours later, my wife is being rushed in Florida to, by ambulance to, uh, to the ER. And they're transferring her to this other hospital. And she started leaking. She thought she was like peeing and she wasn't sure what was going on. She was pregnant, 25 weeks pregnant. And she ends up getting into the hospital and they say her amniotic sac had ruptured. Now, if you know anything about that, that means her water broke, 25 weeks. That's not good. They're saying all kinds of stuff where your kid's going to have a Down syndrome and all this stuff. And like, if he even makes it at all, he's not going to live. All this stuff. They start speaking all this stuff over I'm in Nebraska at a conference while that's happening, and I, I'm up all night. Joshua was with me, and we were praying and interceding. We didn't know what was going on yet. You know, we're trying to figure it out. And I, I start saying, Lord, turn the situation. But I'm like, Lord, show me what's going on here. Show me what's happening. And I begin to go, uh, I begin to go into this vision, and I see this snake that has an E.T. face wrapped around the baby in my womb, and it's laughing at me saying, you can't win. It says, I, I, I've, I'm going to kill this baby. And I, I said, no, not a chance. And I begin to war. Shadra, by the name of Jesus, I bind you. I drive you out. Because I wasn't just looking at the situation and panicking and fear because, oh, that's what we do. Like, I was like, no, what's happening, God? Show me how to pray. Show me how to intercede. You got to get my hand because I know you're before me. I know you're behind me. I know your hand of blessings upon me. I know you got my family in your hands. I, I, I haven't given my life for the gospel and laid my life down and, and, and go on these trips and away from my family and go through this hardship so that, so that my baby can die right now. No, not a chance. Not a chance in Jesus' name. They, they look at my wife. They say, you will not leave this hospital. You will not leave the hospital until the baby is born. It could be one day to three months. Well, I travel for a living. So now I become a full-time stay-at-home dad with the other three kids that are five and under at the time. Like that would have totally revolutionized and changed our life. So I land on the plane. I get to the hospital. The doctors come in the room and I say, I say, like, that's not going to work for us. 
I said, we believe in Jesus, and my wife is already healed in Jesus' name. She's going to leave in a few days. You'll see. They're like, what? Who are you guys? Like, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, yeah, you guys are practicing medicine. We, we get it. Like, we're, we love you guys. We support you. But, like, we're all practicing, right? So, like, like Jesus is a healer. He's the great physician. He's going to turn this thing around. You guys watch. They're like, well, sir, it's in, three, in, in 15 years, there's only been two people that have ever left this hospital that have been healed of an amniotic sac issue, you know. I said, well, she's going to be the third one then. And they're like, they're like, what? Like, as soon as they give some news, like, it's the, it's the seal, it's the end all, it's the exclamation point. I'm like, um, it's actually a comma. Now let me finish the sentence. Like, cause, cause like we believe in somebody that's higher. He is a great physician. He is a doctor. We begin to proclaim it. We begin to pray. We actually ask people to pray on a Facebook live video. And somebody here in Moravian Falls, Susan Starr, um, uh, she, she, uh, many of you probably know her, but she actually was translated into my wife's room and actually saw my wife without knowing it was my wife. And she, she prayed for her in a translation experience, which is pretty cool in itself. But um, Joshua was there. He had a dream of this snake like attacking, uh, attacking my baby in the womb. They, uh, at 17 weeks, we went in for an ultrasound. And they said in this situation that, um, that he had two, uh, I, I heard the Lord speak that he's a prophet. So I'm like, okay, he's a prophet. I'm like, baby, he, they just told me he's a prophet. Like, uh, the Lord just told me he's a prophet. This is incredible. And so uh, a few minutes later, they come in the room and they're like, oh, the baby has two tumors in his brain. It might not, might not be a thing to worry about, but like sometimes in this situation, it can cause lots of issues and they can have all kinds of mental problems and all this stuff. I'm like, I said, no, I said, the Lord just told me three minutes ago, he's a prophet. And now a counter lie comes. I'm like, not a chance. And so then they're like, uh, a few weeks later, we have another ultrasound. There's a blood problem. They're having this issue. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to work. Down syndrome is a very high possibility. And I'm like, no, not a chance in Jesus name. I said, we don't receive that news. We don't declare it. We're not even going to like acknowledge it in Jesus name. We're like, Jesus said, this baby is a prophet. He's going to be healthy in Jesus' name. A few weeks later, my wife's rushed by ambulance for the amniotic sac issue. And now we're going through it again. And then I travel a few weeks later. She starts leaking more fluid, which they said was just regular pregnancy stuff. But I'm in Seattle this time with Sean Foy and all the team up in Seattle, the Chaz Chop Zone, and we're preaching Jesus to all the BLM and all the, all the Antifa and all the Satanists that are marching through the crowd. And we're like, all right, Jesus, get some praise in this place. We're praying with people. It's incredible. And while I'm there, my wife has another hospital episode. I'm like, what is happening right now? He's like fighting this thing. He's fighting this million souls that we declared, and he's coming after my family. And I said, in Jesus' name, God is before me. He's behind me. His hand of blessing is upon me, and we're not going to lose this fight. And can I tell you, five days after she went into that hospital, friends, she left the hospital completely well in Jesus' name. Two separate hospitals confirmed it. They were like, oh, maybe we made a mistake, and like, oh, it was probably just a false positive. I'm like, no, two of your hospitals got it wrong. I said, you guys confirmed each other's. I said, this is a healing in Jesus' name. And the doctors said to the other doctor, we overheard him in the hallway, they said, it's more likely that this woman received a miracle because she did say she had a lot of people praying, but the other doctors are like, yeah, well, I don't, you know. <laughs> We're like, that's right. You better believe it. Hey guys, hope you're enjoying the podcast today and all that God is doing with this Awaken the Wonder podcast. If you want to get the first two free chapters of my book, Hunger, you can go to kingdomencounters.us slash free. I hope you guys are blessed by this. Stay tuned for the rest of the podcast in just a moment. Can I tell you that God is before you? He's behind you. His hand of blessing is upon you. You cannot get away from his spirit. You cannot get away from his presence. If you get sick, he'll heal you. If you die, you go to be with Jesus. Like you literally can't be slaughtered in Jesus name. You live forever. You're eternal. You're immortal in the presence of God. Can I tell you that you are blessed and not cursed in Jesus name? You were born as conquerors. You were made to prosper. You were made to overcome. You were made to declare the mysteries and the wonders of God. Can I tell you, I feel fire in this place right now. Friends, Jesus is for you. He has a plan for you. He has a purpose for you. You will overcome in Jesus' name. You will live to see the glory of God and you will watch it come to pass in Jesus' name, in your family, in this house, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. This writer, David, says it's too knowledge, too wonderful for me to understand but I can't get away from his spirit. I can't get away from his presence. Can I tell you that we need the Holy Spirit? We need his presence. We have to have him. 
If he's always there, my friends, then the issue is that we don't recognize that he's there. It's an attention issue. We have to turn our eyes to Jesus. We have to turn our eyes and acknowledge that the Holy Spirit is here. He is with you. He is with you. He is with you. There is another reality that God has written over your life, my friends, and it is meant to succeed. It is meant to prosper. It is meant to overcome in your life. We need to say, Lord, show me where I'm not recognizing you. Help me to create an atmosphere of my life where I see you all the time. Thank you for listening to Awaken the Wonder. If you enjoyed today's show and want more ministry like this, please visit kingdomencounters.us where you can find weekly blogs and my latest book, Hunger. Be sure to subscribe and follow me on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram at the tag Evangelist Caleb Wampler. If the Lord leads you to partner with us in the nations in prayer and giving, visit kingdomencounters.us. I'll see you next time.